The Lord bless you and make you prosperous spiritually, dear heart dwellers. Well, we have a few things going on right now. This is the time when we're approaching Halloween and a lot of curses are being dropped on Christians, especially around the world. And it's the season when the light is waning and that's when a lot of these curses are are being sent out. And here on the refuge, we've had a few visitors who have come to curse. And the Lord has allowed it because he wants us to know who they are. And we appreciate that. But even more than knowing who they are, he wants us to love them. He doesn't want us to react in fear or anxiety or hatred, but just the opposite, to love them. And why shouldn't we love them? Because they're headed to a very bad place because of what they've chosen in life. And he doesn't want them to go there. He is all for saving every single one of them. So I was thinking about all the witches that have banded together to come against us. Ones in Africa, Europe, and the Middle East, and here in America. Then I heard the Lord say, there is no defense against love. It is the highest power, the definitive factor in war, the power and glory of God himself that inhabits every soul that loves me. Claire, they have no defense against love at all. There's no armor that can penetrate it and touch the very inner parts of a soul. That is why it is hated so much. There's nothing in this universe that can stop love, genuine love, from the soul, especially when it is countering evil intentions. These witches and Taos go way back to the 60s, but even before that, the generational criminal witches that came to this country to escape persecution are here with the generations of their children. Many of them are versed in the Babylonian practices handed on down to them by their ancestors because the Jews were at one time exiled to Babylonia and they picked up a lot of things there and in Egypt as well. About 70% of them are born into covens, that is their aunties and uncles were practitioners and inducted them before the age of reason, about five years old. They are made to commit atrocities at that tender age, and from that point forward are locked into fear of punishment and death if they try to escape. Many who call themselves Christians have done more damage than good to these little ones, and they come to equate religion with being violated. It is no wonder that they hate those who profess to be Christians, go to church, picnics, and even teach catechism, but are still misled in their hearts and violate the trust of the young ones. In their helplessness, they turn to witchcraft, which offers them a chance to get even and protect themselves. They don't know what a real Christian is. And that is why they join covens. From the outside looking in, covens offer protection and a sense of family. Satan is like daddy to them, and they trust and believe in him to protect and further their agendas in the world, which very often is guided into law enforcement, politics, medicine, teaching, and the judicial system. These are key positions that put them in a position to do the most harm. Really, it is a wonder that you are still alive, for my angels have done well to protect you and will continue to do so. Let me make this very clear. I was there when they were violated and compromised. I wept for them and longed to break this cycle in their family line but they are surrounded on all sides by practitioners who watch them very carefully. Those in education recruit them 
as early as five years old or before the age of reason, which is seven, I cried for all the ways in which they were abused, but was unable to do anything to stop it. Lord, why is that? There are dedications and covenants made during the pregnancy and at birth that put them under Satan's rule, and there are other generational curses that are being handed down for the sins of their ancestors. There are promises made to these little ones that if they do a certain thing, they will be given powers and gifts. And so they learn to practice at a very early age, especially curses of retaliation against teachers, parents, and siblings. What I want to say is that I love them very dearly, no matter what they've done. I understand them and love them through it all. I want to apologize to them for what people did, especially those professing to be Christians, ministers, and others that represent God. Atrocious things were done, things a true Christian would never, ever do. I want to apologize, but they will rarely read it and even more rarely respond with forgiveness and repentance. So I allow them to attack you and ask that you return their hatred with love, just as I had to do with the Pharisees and scribes. Those of you who have chosen Satan over me, I understand why you have done so. You have been exploited by many men and women who are also treated as you were and turned bitter only wanting to pay back the ones that were cruel to them. Thus, a cycle is set up in every generation, reflecting back on the practices of the parents and what was done to them, and they continue to do that to their children and their children's children. There's only one thing I ask of you, and that is that you open your eyes to see clearly who you are dealing with, Look at the ways they hurt others with lying, stealing, cheating, and cursing them, even to death. When you see how they treat others, you are seeing what you will, in turn, over time, turn into, what you will become, and even how you may be treated if you fall out of favor in the coven. Yes, anything goes for your self-gratification, when you were crossed by one of these. I long to see you healed of the wounds that you have suffered from those who were abusive. I long to see you thriving with new life, healthy and following your dreams. I long to see you discovering your destinies and inching forward. You have only one thing to do, and that is ask. Jesus, after all you have seen me do, you still want me for your kingdom? Please help me to accept you into my life and protect me from those who would harm me for converting. Now, there are going to be some evangelicals that are listening to this and saying, we've got to do a whole lot more than that. Well, the point is here, the Lord is inviting them to just give him a chance. The rest of it he'll take care of. All of it will be taken care of. But right now, he's just asking they would give him a chance. Instead of equating Christians with the people that had hurt them in the past, that they would give him a chance because he is sweet and loving and kind and very protective. And they have not experienced that from Christians. Quite the opposite. Jesus continued, I will protect and teach you and you will flourish and not be afraid of those who will hate you. If only you will come to me and ask, I will be there for you, because I do love you. That's the end of that message.